Hello there everyone, today we're gonna do this. This is a pike fly and if you tie this on, uh, with a saltwater hook then I'm pretty sure this would be quite quite awesome for, for saltwater as well. We're gonna use some of these new dragon tails in the grizzly color and we're also gonna use uh, some new saddles that we have just gotten into the shop which are these. These are without a doubt the best pike saddles we ever had. As you can see I can hide behind this, that is how many feathers there is on this. I can hide behind here. Um, so, so the amount of feathers here is just absolutely out of this world. And every single one of these are, are uh, the perfect broad size for, for a pike. So these Euro hackle from Whiting is the best pike hackle uh, I've seen ever. Really, really an awesome, awesome product. Oh well, let's just get started with the tying. So the first thing we need to do is, is to tie the tail part where we can actually apply the, uh, the wriggle tail. And uh, for this I'm using a shank. Using a shank here. If you can hear a bit of uh, things in the background it's just uh, we are having uh, some, uh, some people over for fly tying as well here in the showroom. Um, and they are having a good time it sounds like. <laughs> um, so uh, basically like this and then I'm gonna tie in a small bundle of bucktail. Not too much of this, but just a small amount to just kind of give this where the tail should be. Cutting off this. Uh, when I did this video in Danish, I had a bit of an accident with the hook. They're very sharp and very strong, these uh, these uh, A-Rex hooks, so <laughs> I, I got a, into a bit of a fight with one of those. Yeah, yeah. I won. Um, and then for the next part here, I'm just going to add a bit of Senu Acro Veil in blue. The color scheme of this fly, as you saw, is going to be light blue and white. And then basically just a few turns of this. Not that much, but just a little to, to give the, uh, the tail here just a bit of material. Gonna cut that off, and then I'm gonna take two of the saddle feathers, and uh, as you saw before, these these Euro Euro saddles are just out of this world in with the quality. Just simply, truly, truly amazing, truly, truly amazing, truly, truly amazing stuff. I'm gonna take two feathers from those if I can find some that is not too long because. These are the, these don't have to be that long. It's just for the tail part, so I don't want feathers that are too long, which is a bit difficult to actually find on these. But I managed here. I'm gonna tie these here on both sides, so they're kind of gonna be kind of like a tail, like the uh, like the wriggle uh, the the dragon tail is gonna be also. That's the tail part. That away. Add a bit of add a bit of sabagap. And then leave the tail off to dry. And we need a hook. And for this I'm gonna use an Arix uh, Light Predator in 6.0. Really, really a nice hook, and for for the for this fly, I want this fly to actually be able to sink. So I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a 5.5 millimeter tungsten bead. This one is copper. It doesn't matter what color it has because it's gonna be it's gonna completely concealed by all uh, by a lot of other materials. But we just need to add one of those at the to the fly now. Then I add some tying thread, and uh, we need some. Uh, some not too kinky wire to to be able to attach this uh, this uh, this articulated tail. And I had a lot of that laying around here. It is. We don't need a too big a piece of this. Uh, this is the same material I use for my um, for my um, cut this off for my uh, traces for my leaders. 
And since this is not going to hold any hook or anything, you don't have to tie this down twice. One time is, is sufficient. Um, we need some beads now, some 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 pearls or some beads to actually have the tail uh, hold the tail out uh, behind the the fly in a in a in a satisfactory length. So now I've tied down the the nut to kinky. I'm gonna add some beads. Can see I need to change the camera angle as well. I'm gonna add five to this one to get it a bit further away. Four, three, four, five. Like this, and um, the, the red is a nice color. I could, it's going to be a bit of a contrast. You could have used a lot of different colors, but I'm going to you go with the red here. So, and then I'm going to add the tail, and then I'm going to push the leader here back through every one of the beads. Like this. Gonna tie it down, and I'm gonna force the beads a bit further back, like this. So now I have the tail just hanging off there. I have the beads to to keep the tail from actually tangling with the with the hook. Gonna cut this off. This is a 10 year old scissor that I use exclusively for stuff like that. It's not my normal regular uh, fly tying scissor. Just gonna add a tiny amount of sabagap gap to make sure this stays there. And we're off to the next part of the fly. And the next part of the fly is actually uh, a bundle of bucktail. Mm. This is not as good as it used to be, this bucktail. I've been tying many, many, many flies with this. It's it's soon done. Soon need need to get another one. But I think it will it will it will be usable for for this fly. And uh, this first part of the bucktail here, I'm not gonna tie this reverse. I'm gonna tie it down uh, so it's so it's facing backwards because if I tied this down reverse it would stand up too much. And I don't want this uh, on this part of the fly. Basically like that. Like that. Yeah. Perfect. Gonna cut off all this. Most of this. Then I'm gonna add a bit of flesh, and the flesh for for this pattern is gonna be uh, is gonna be a flesh in a, in a in a in a in a in a nice light blue uh, hue with some pearl added. This is actually fluorescent blue and also uh, also glow in the dark blue. It's not probably not an effect we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take advantage of uh, because. Because uh, this is probably not a fly we're going to use it at night, uh, but but still, it, it it's nice that it has the uh, that it actually has the uh, the the fluorescent effect. Turn that around. And tying that down again, so it's it's gonna be tied down doubly, and that really really is gonna work nice. I just realized how light blue my shirt was, so I'm gonna change to this uh, gray one. <laughs> okay. The next part of the fly is is to to uh, to to uh, get some filler flesh, some flesh that fills up the the hook here, 
And for this, I'm gonna use some uh, a bundle more of the uh, of the Senyo Aqua Rail. And as I said before, it's not necessary to do this completely. Uh, completely thoroughly and so that it, it's it's on every single inch uh, of the of the shank here just you know it's 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 just to fill up the 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 space between the uh, the front part of the fly and and this this uh, this a bit further behind part of the fly like this And I have more than a centimeter to the to the hook eye now, um, where I finish this off. Then I'm gonna do a finish, because I'm gonna bring the uh, the bead back on top of this and tie in front of the bead. Pull the bead back there. Then reattach the tying thread. Make a reverse tie uh, tie of uh, of uh, of bucktail now, and here I want it to be reversed because I want this to be fairly fairly big bundle, fairly big and fairly bulky. Like this, and I'm gonna tie this reverse. I'm gonna turn this over. And tie up to the bucktail here. So this will give the fly more bulk here in the in the in the head of the fly. And um, then we need to tie in a, a small bundle of bucktail, uh, not bucktail, but uh, big fly fiber. In this, in this, uh, this light blue hue. Yeah. We don't need a too big of a bundle that's going to make the fly too bulky. Uh, so not too much of this. Often you need to use a bit less material for pike flies than what one what, what one would expect, because otherwise they get too bulky and they get too difficult to cast. So this will give the fly a nice, a nice, uh, a, a bit more volume without adding too much material. That's what the big fly fiber really is nice for, adding volume. Now I'm going to add some more flesh. And we're going to use the same flesh as before. This glow in the dark, light blue one. Fleshable. About half, a little bit less than half of the diameter. Half of the length for this to have the fly tapering the right way. Now we need another two, th maybe four or five of these uh, grizzly hackles. Awesome, awesome feathers. One, two, three, four, five.
I'm gonna take a bit more care when I tie these down. We don't want these to be as long as the ha as the tail. A bit shorter than that. And uh, like this. Then one on top here. And then two more a bit on more on the sides. It just looks so freaking awesome with these uh, these grizzly grizzly hackles. I just I I adore them. I simply just adore them, and and they also look so awesome out in the water. Really, really awesome in the water. Wow. <laughs> Looks freaking awesome. And then for the finishing touch, we're gonna do a, a grizzly, a, a, a barred marabou hackle. Um, this is a, this is a this is a hairline product that I'm very very happy with, and I use this a lot. I really really think these uh, these feathers are awesome. And they make up a very nice uh, finishing touch to to a fly like this because they have the striations, they have the markings. That makes them look awesome. They're really, really lively, uh, a really lively material in the water, and um, and also um, it's it's fairly durable. It's gonna be it's gonna be held in place by a, by a flyman fish skull, so uh, so it's it's also gonna be very well protected from actually breaking. Just turn and turn and turn this hackle. I want as much of this feather used as possible because the more I use of this, the more it's gonna fill out the uh, the flyman fish skull, um, and that's important. And, and this is not gonna be uh, it's it's not gonna be a problem um, in the water. It's it's not that heavy. It's not gonna add a lot of weight to the fly. So basically, just using my hackle plier instead of just my fingers here. I think I can get one more turn of this in here. And also this is easier than doing a doing a craft fur a craft fur a dubbing loop or something like that. And it really just gives such a cool effect to the fly. Really really outstanding cool effect to the fly here. Almost there. <laughs> this really, really is a nice pattern. And it's a nice style. I like this way of tying pike flies. And you have a lot of different stuff going on that really works well together. The big fly fiber and the bucktail are classics, of course with the flesh abu also and uh, and then you have the option to actually be able to put the the dragon tail on here it's not attached permanently so you can you can basically you can choose if you want it or if if you don't and and i think that's pretty cool as well and i'm going to take a fish mask in size 8 i like the size 8 for hooked flies and and i use the size 10 more for for tube flies and i basically i just Add some sabag up to the inside of this. We can add a bit of sabag up here as well to the hack hole. Gonna push this over here, and that's gonna that's gonna stay there as soon as the sabag up dries. Then we add some sabag up to the uh, to the dentation for the eye. 
and attach a lifelike eye in silver or whatever eye you feel look looks nice. This looks nice, I think. Same on the other side. And then your fly is, well, it's not completely done. It's almost done because you can now add one of the new uh, grizzly, uh, grizzly wriggle tails to this if you want. I just also want to, this is a bit on the long side for me, so I'm going to trim it a bit. And this one is going to take a swim tomorrow. <laughs> Really, really nice looking. And then all we need to do is simply to add, you know, the grizzly dragon tail. So there we have a nice pair of blue-hued pike flies ready to go. Um, thank you so much for, for, for watching. If you haven't done so already, then please swing by my web shop. It's nordicanglers.com. Um, I have full material kits uh, for, for this fly and, and many others. And if you haven't done so already, then please subscribe to, to the YouTube channel also. Otherwise, good luck out on the water. I uh, hope to see you out there.